Hi there, my name is Marisa Bate and today I'm with Susanna Reid on the very Good Morning Britain sofa. Hi Susanna. The very Good the Morning. The very Good Morning Britain sofa. And it always is a good morning on this sofa. <laughs> it looks a bit comfier than the desk maybe. Um, actually, luckily, I've got a cushion at the desk okay. um, and we're awash with cushions here. So <laughs> yeah. everywhere we sit, it's comfortable, which quite frankly is what we need because Absolutely. sometimes what we're broadcasting is uncomfortable and sometimes some of the in interactions are uncomfortable. So can you tell me, what is the magic of breakfast TV? The really interesting thing about breakfast television is obviously that time of day, People are really keen, often, to be getting out of the house. They've got a bus to catch, or they've got to get on the tube, or they've got to get a train, or they've got to get somewhere to school or work. But you don't want them to switch off the television. So you want to be there for them, be their friend, uh, maybe be a little bit antagonistic, or, you know, sort of, uh, you want them to be interested and entertained and not switch off the television. Can I ask you a bit about the pressure of being on live TV every day? Mm. You look amazing. I presume you've been up since an, an ungodly hour for the rest of us. The thing is, we have an absolutely incredible hair, makeup and wardrobe team. I wouldn't be able to put this together myself. And frankly, on a day off, I don't look anything like this. And you know what? That's one of my uh, things is that um, there's that for saying, isn't there? Um, you'll never look like the girl in the magazine. The girl in the magazine doesn't even look like the girl in the magazine. I'm very keen to show and to remind people that uh, this is a look which is created through um, professionals who know what they're doing. This is not, you know, do not feel like this is something I roll out of bed looking you like. You woke up like this. <laughs> because when I wake up, I look a fright. So, um, you know, I don't want women to 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 look at other women who are in television or in modeling shoots or in magazines and think I'm never going to look like that because frankly without the help of the team behind the scenes I wouldn't look like this either and then people say well why don't you just go on air without all this hair and makeup and uh, you know all the kind of professional styling well we go on air looking like this because we want to look professional in our jobs and we want to look as good as we can possibly be because that's part of the magic of television is that, you know, people have a certain look. But I think it's also uh, key to be honest about, you know, and I'll sometimes post pictures, especially if I've done a big photo shoot, I'll just post a picture of how I look the morning after compared to how I look in the picture, you know, without the false eyelashes and the, and the makeup and the hair styling, you know, it's, it's a different story. And that must be one of the reasons you have a huge social media following, but that 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 honesty and authenticity. Yeah, I mean, I to show the other side. I think it is about showing the other side. It's it's, it, I you know I think it's also honest and authentic to look like this on air because that's you know people want to look in magazines and see great pics and they want to switch on the television and see people you know peers in a suit and you know having he has. I don't think I'm giving any secrets away. He spends a few moments in the makeup chair as well and has his hair styled, sure regularly that. trimmed. He wears a tie and smart shoes, you know, and I do the equivalent as well. Did you and Piers have any idea of the kind of relationship that would unfold? I mean, I've heard it described as a kind of Jack and Vera Duckworth That's right, type yeah. relationship. And you are... You know, the, I think the internet calls it, you, you're very good at owning him, oh, I yeah. think is the phrase. Well, that's, it, it, it is, it's a very interesting relationship and it has its, um, uh, obviously, you know, we, the ratings are up, so there are plenty of people who really enjoy it. it do, also, there are criticisms of the relationship as well. And, um, and I'm interested by all of that because it is, a, it is an interesting dynamic between us. And Piers, you know, talks for Britain. He really does. And I've always said, you know, he could start a, a row in an empty room. You know, he, he, he can literally have a, a row with his own shoes. You know, he's just an outrage machine. And if things aren't heated enough and things aren't uh, uh, it, sort of dynamic enough of a morning, he'll create that. You know, his job, as he sees it, is to be a controversialist. And, and he loves that. And therefore, my role is, you know, to, to sort of watch that happen and to acknowledge that the audience totally tunes in to see that. You know, when he's off on one about gender neutral clothing, 
uh, or whatever his particular issue of the day is. I don't necessarily agree, and I would say 80% of the time I do not agree with Piers about uh, political issues or about Trump or about you know his issues about how men and women should behave, whatever. But it's about choosing your moment. It's about choosing your moment to put in a word for the other side uh, and just presenting a different viewpoint. And I think, I hope my role is to have, it's obviously not equal time in terms of what's being said, but in the power of what's being said, I think we're completely balanced. Absolutely, you, you seem to very much, it's a very equal relationship perhaps with a man who doesn't always express the most uh, equal or quality friendly ideas. Do you ever... Well, except if Piers were sitting where you are now, he would say he's absolutely all for equality, he calls himself a feminist. Um, but obviously, lots of people, and lots of women, uh, lots of activists, uh, lots of feminists take issue with what he says. But I think also that that's really important as well. These are arguments that are going on all the time. And Piers does not always win the arguments. You know, as I said, he who sh shouts loudest doesn't necessarily always win the fight. Are you ever offended? I mean, when Jacob Rees-Mogg came on your show mm. and, you, and he, his views on abortion, mm. which are very extreme, and you're, you looked visibly shocked. You know, you looked um, almost horrified at the idea that he would not condone rape, mm. um, abortion, abortion in the case, in the case of, of rape. Or, yeah. Or rape. Yeah. And at what point do you, where does the line of Susanna presenter yeah. end and the line of Susanna you begin because that's quite yeah. an extreme thing to hear. It is not extreme to people who hold the same views and there will be plenty of people who will support uh, that view. There are also plenty of people uh, who support the right of a politician to answer a question honestly and there's plenty of people who admire someone with whom they vehemently disagree but admire for speaking honestly and not you know, fudging uh, their views on something. But I have a different view to peers on this, uh, the issue about where your opinions come into play. Because, you know, I have years of BBC training and experience behind me, and I feel it's absolutely right that I remain neutral on all issues. Um, and so whether I'm interviewing, you know, Nigel Farage about Brexit or whether I'm interviewing Jacob Rees-Mogg about his views on abortion or gay marriage or, you know, whoever, whoever we're talking to, the Prime Minister, the President of the United States, hopefully, uh, at some stage, uh, I, my personal view is that my uh, personal feelings don't enter into it. I'm, I'm happy to express my personal feelings when I'm arguing with peers but I think it's a separate thing when you're, when you're arguing or interviewing politicians. Um, and can I ask you, what's the best and the worst thing about your job? <laughs> well, it's probably the same answer, <laughs> isn't it? My lovely co-presenter, who at times uh, makes me tear out my hair in frustration, um, and, but most of the time makes it really exhilarating. When Piers arrived, I've always said it's like a mini tornado came into the studio and came into the program and sort of changed things to a certain extent, gave it a new type of energy as well. Um, but all the original team's still here and, uh, you know, it, he's added an extra ingredient. <laughs> he has. You know, it, it's, it's an exciting job anyway, being on live television, but to have every day that element of the unpredictable and you never know what's going to happen next and you never know what people are going to write about and how people are going to respond throughout the course of the programme. You know, that just makes it even better. Can you put peers in three words for us? Um, <laughs> I don't think three words is enough. <laughs> <laughs> he certainly wouldn't manage it, would he? <laughs> well, Susanna, it's been an absolute oh, privilege thank to you talk so to much. you. We're huge fans of yours. Though. Yeah, thank well, I'm huge so fans much. of yours as well. So, and you do a great job. Oh, so thank thanks. you very much. Likewise, thank you.